Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we are talking XFL wide receivers, breaking down the top wide receivers for fantasy purposes in the XFL for 2020. Not going to waste any time. Let's get started right away. All right, guys, so I'm super excited to talk about wide receivers. I do believe this is going to be one of the uh, most fun positions to play with in fantasy football now. There's a lot of depth at this position. There's going to be a lot of teams that are, you know, three, even four deep at fantasy relevant wide receivers on a week by week basis. So there's definitely a lot more names that are going to be relevant than the ones I'm mentioning here. But I did want to go through the players that I think right now finish in the top eight, which would basically make them wide receiver ones in the XFL. So we'll begin with none other than Nelson Spruce, wide receiver for the Los Angeles Wildcats. Now I've been a little bit down on him up until the past week or so, uh, until you know I've seen at least some progress and some uh, light coming through for him in the Los Angeles Wildcats training camp. And you know, really looking back at some of his play from the AAF last year, his uh, in, his play has been far more impressive than his metrics have been. Because when you look at his overall stats, he's not really doesn't really have anything uh, you know that special going for him. But overall. He's performing well and he should just be a solid PPR guy. In the AAF, he actually had, uh, I believe, the second most receptions of every receiver in the AAF. He had 38 receptions on 426, uh, for 426 yards through eight games. Um, and then he doesn't offer, like I said, he doesn't offer much in terms of being excited with his measurables, but the trade where Rashad Ross uh, moved to the DC Defenders and the bringing McBride over, I think may have been a, more of a tell on what LA thinks about Spruce and Cannon and less about what they think about McBride, which I don't understand the purpose for that trade otherwise, but honestly McBride hasn't really been heard of or you know really spoken of much ever since that trade there was even some rumors that McBride was talking about retiring from the XFL before it even started so I've become incredibly down on him he's plummeted in my rankings which brought both Spruce and Cannon up a bit and I do think that Spruce will end up getting the uh, highest floor with a decent amount of PPR uh, points being scored every week but I, I think they will end up being one of Josh Johnson's favorite targets um, just overall, he should be one of those high floor guys that gives you a decent ceiling each week. And you know, if he continues what he was doing in the AAF, he'll be a pretty valuable fantasy asset in the XFL. All right, let's jump over to number seven. I have Mikael McKay for the New York Guardians. Now, last year in the in the AAF, McKay went 22 for 375 yards, including a 54 yard touchdown bomb. He had four touchdowns in total and shows showed off his big play capabilities. Now, a lot of people have McKay a lot higher than do than I do right now. I do think McKay is still very valuable, but my worries with McKay uh, will be that he's not really able to use his speed or his ability to make a play deep downfield because of the quarterback throwing him the ball in Matt McLoin. Now, Matt McLoin has never really been known for his deep ball ability, which I do believe limits McKay's upside. I don't think that the Guardians will be a low scoring team necessarily, but I don't think that uh, we're going to see too many you know, deep bombs being thrown McKay's way just because McLoin has just really never been known for being able to hit the deep ball with great accuracy. Now McKay will still definitely carry a lot of value in the red zone, which is why I still have him very high because he should still be a pretty high scoring fantasy producer. I just think that his week to week consistency will be a bit volatile because if he's not scoring for you and he's not getting a lot of big plays, he could have some disappointing weeks. But overall, I think he'll finish the season as a really high producer because he'll probably have some of those explosive games where he scores two touchdowns and has multiple uh, extra point conversions. So uh, he's definitely going to be a presence in the red zone, which is why I still have him very high at number seven. All right, jumping over to number six. Now, this is a little bit gutsy, but I have Antonio Callaway for the Tampa Bay Vipers. Callaway was traded to the uh, Tampa Bay, or not traded, he signed with the Tampa Bay Vipers last week after finally uh, you know, giving up hope that his NFL career is going to continue unless he does something to rejuvenate it. I think that's his goal here is to show that he still has talent and hopefully get signed in the NFL next year once he can battle some of those uh, demons with substance abuse. 
Um, that's honestly the biggest risk here is the fact that he could potentially you know, do something that gets him in trouble in the XFL as well. And the fact that he was just signed by the Vipers last week, they have a very short amount of time to acclimate him to the system. But in all reality, a lot of these teams are still so incredibly new. I'm not too worried about that second point, and I'm also not sure how stringent the XFL is going to be on players unless they're openly cheating. You know, I don't think that they're, we're going to see the same amount of strict enforcement of like drug policy that we see in the NFL. So we'll see if Antonio Callaway can uh, you know, battle his demons, but also avoid suspension in the XFL. We'll see how that plays out. But overall, when you look at his talent, his metrics, I think he best compares to Kenny Stills in the NFL. He definitely has all the skills and capabilities needed to succeed for Tampa Bay, and I think he could very easily be ranked higher than number six, could be one of the better wide receivers here. It's just the risk that he carries is what brings him down to number six for me. But <clears throat> in terms of players that I want to draft in the XFL, I want talented players, and Antonio Callaway is definitely that. All right, let's jump over to number five. We're looking at Eli Rogers for the DC Defenders, the former Pittsburgh Steeler out of Louisville. In his last regular season start in the NFL, he went seven for 57, and he's still playing in his prime age. Um, he is the perfect complement to Rashad Ross. Rashad Ross is more of a deep threat, big play kind of guy, whereas Eli Rogers is going to be the more underneath route kind of guy, where I think Eli Rogers will carry a more consistent floor week to week. Not sure how many boom games he is going to have in DC, just considering the, the depth of talent that they have around them. But I think Eli Rogers will be a very consistent play each week. And in a league where there's a lot of unknowns out there, having a consistent player that's putting up, you know, pretty high levels of points each week is going to be tremendously valuable, which is why I have Eli Rogers as my number five. All right, let's jump over to number four, D'Angelo Yancey for the New York Guardians. So kind of continuing my take on Mikael McKay. Uh, D'Angelo Yancey is 25 years old, the former uh, Green Bay Packer, who graduated from Purdue carries a much higher burst and agility score than McKay with an 82nd percentile Spark X score at the Combine. So more athletic than McKay and I think he can create more separation at the line. Um, definitely also someone that's capable of big plays, but I think that D'Angelo Yancey carries a betterable, better measurable score that's going to work well with the more dink and dunk short passing game that is going to exist in New York with Matt McLoyne. So while, uh, you know, he also won't see that many deep balls, I think he ends up receiving more targets than we'll see McKay get. And uh, honestly, the only thing that I think McKay will beat D'Angelo Yancey in terms of stats is probably touchdown production, but I think D'Angelo Yancey will receive more catches, more yards, which will ultimately lead him to have a better fantasy season than Mikael me, me, McKay. Um, so I know it's somewhat of a bold take at this point, but I, I really think that Yancey will have a monster here and will end up being the better receiver there in New York. All right, let's jump over to wide receiver number three, Jeff Bidette for the Dallas Renegades. This undrafted speedster out of Oklahoma and for, former Minnesota Viking now gets to play in one of the better teams in the XFL with a perfect complement of Jazz Ferguson on the other side of the ball. Jeff Bidette is incredibly quick. He's a bit on the smaller side, similar to kind of like a guy like Stephon Diggs in the NFL, but he should provide uh, be, or be, be provided with plenty of targets, um, short underneath routes, which again is going to complement the quarterback, whether it's Philip Walker for the whole season or we get Landry Jones here pretty soon. It's going to fit really well uh, in that offense because there's going to be some deep targets that will most likely go mostly to Jazz Ferguson, but Jeff Bidette has the ability to break free downfield as well, but I think Jeff Bidette becomes a PPR monster and has the ability to break free on a lot of long yards after catch plays. 
Overall, I think Jeff Bidette is one of the most interesting and exciting receivers in this league, and I look for him to dominate. I think his talent level is just significant over the other players in this league, which is why I have him at number three. All right, jumping to number two, we have Rashad Ross for the DC Defenders. Or originally drafted by the Los Angeles Wildcats and then traded to the Defenders, as we kind of mentioned earlier, Trey McBride uh, getting traded for Rashad Ross. Now, I think Ross sees a serious value increase getting to play uh, for DC and uh, with Cardale Jones and considering the only other main target for receptions if from the receivers anyway is uh, with Eli Rogers. I do think that uh, Ross ends up becoming the main red zone play here in DC, which I believe DC is gonna score a lot of touchdowns. And I think Rashad Ross is gonna continue to see his success from the AAF translate over. Rashad Ross led the league uh, for receivers in the touchdown category. He had seven touchdowns in eight games. And while he doesn't necessarily carry the floor of a guy like Bidet or even Rogers on the other side of the same team, uh, I do believe he has weak winning upside and because of that is making him well worth an early pick is why I have him at my number two. All right, but let's jump to my number one player for the wide receivers in the XFL for fantasy. We've got Sammy Coates for the Houston Roughnecks. Now, this is a freak athlete coming from Auburn and a former Steeler. Finally gets to come to the XFL, entering his prime season at age 26, going on 27. Sammy Coates is one of the highest, higher octane, or playing on one of the higher octane offenses in the XFL. The Houston Roughnecks are looking to have a very high scoring, high flying, passing volume team with a defense that leaves some, you know, some room to be desired. So there should be a lot of scoring to be had in Houston. And Sammy Coates has already shown us in both training camp and, uh, you know, even just his play in the NFL, he has that big play capability, but he's also a freak athlete. He should be one of the predominant red zone and extra point targets for the Houston Roughnecks and he has the ability to break away on any play. I mean if there's any one player that could definitely just dominate and be the most explosive player at the position, Sammy Coates is definitely it and is well worth a first round pick in fantasy drafts. But anyway, uh, if you guys are curious how I have all of the players ranked that are relevant for fantasy, feel free to click the link in the description below or go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com. You can access my pre-draft rankings for free. I will be updating those all the way up until the time the season starts, so feel free to check those out. But anyway, if you guys have any other names that you're curious about or have uh, people that you're keeping an eye on, feel free to comment below. We'll have a discussion about it. We'll probably be talking about them in the future. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one.